today on the Trend Out Loud podcast. It's really going to be about exposing subject matter. What are you going to pick on Drake? Like everybody always makes fun of Drake, but Kung Fu Kenny, Kendrick Lamar is more of like a serious dude, right? He's serious. He's an easier target to pick on. What up? It's your boy Trent Out Loud and I'm back with another episode. All right. It's Thursday morning. I am ready to get you guys through the day to take you to Friday and then to the weekend. I got a good show set up for you guys. All right. We got two lead stories and one of them is breaking news. I got a Kendrick Lamar and Drake update. Trust me. You're going to want to tune in for that. Uh, then we have another lead story about Young Miami. Then we're going to jump into quick news. We're going to talk about Ari Lennox and Joe Button. And also the unfortunate passing of Mr. C, uh, rest in peace. Then we're going to jump into speed news. I got some Robin Thicke, Donald Trump, Kim Kardashian, Megan Thee Stallion. Trust me, you're going to want to stay tuned for that as well. Two questions of the day, and we're going to close off with sports news. We're going to talk about Cam Newton on a club Shay Shay. Y'all know what time it is. Turn your TVs, devices, or your radios up. I'm about to start this show. Let's go. Joe Button claims that Drake and Kendrick Lamar have nuclear disses ready, locked, and loaded. All right, this is a crazy news. This is breaking news. Joe um, said this yesterday, so we're about like 12 hours in. We have yet to hear a diss track, but it's supposed to drop on Friday. That's apparently when these two tracks are supposed to drop. Now, I don't know if it's going to be one track going to dropping at midnight and then somebody else will go after or they're both going to go at midnight. Well, Thursday night, midnight, but really Friday morning. Like, I don't know. There's a lot of speculation. Uh, also, we don't know 100% if this is fact, but if it's coming from Joe, if Joe's talking to people um, and, you know, Joe is, is prominent out here in, you know, urban hip hop media, uh, I think they're telling him for a reason. So I really don't think that this is BS. I really think it's going to happen. I do have a little clip. I obviously can't play the whole thing for you, but uh, listen to the clip and then I'll fill you on the rest of it afterwards. Take a listen. I have it on good information that both sides went in the booth and came out. And what I'm hearing about both sides is that it's nuclear. I'm hearing this from people that can rap. I'm here to say that there's no longer any need for me to instigate anything. We're here. You notice at the end where he's like, yo, I no longer have to instigate anything. We are here. Yo, I am so excited about this. I'm so excited. Yo, I know that my boy Drizzy is going to wash Kendrick. Yes, I said it. He's going to wash Kendrick. I feel like when this battle is over, uh, Drake will reign supreme. He will reign king of the rap game. I have a, I, I know it. I just know it. Um, I'm not going to say that Kendrick is not going to come with some heat, but after seeing what Drake did to um, Meek, um, I know he technically took a loss um, to push, uh, not responding, but that had other things to do with Jay Prince and, you know, he felt like Push took it too far. I actually did sidebar. I actually went and listened to um, Push's um uh, distracted to Drake and it was cold as ice. <laughs> I got to give that the push. But anyways, um, yeah, I feel like Drake is just way too calculated. Like he's going to come up with something calculated. He's going to come with something that's like that. We're not even thinking about. Like, I feel like Drake has spies and he's in his camp. Like he's going to dig up something just like, it's just going to be too big for Kendrick to come back from. I just feel like Kendrick is a bigger, um, he's sorry, not bigger, but he's an easier target to pick on where it's like, what are you going to pick on Drake? Like everybody always makes fun of Drake, right? Everybody like, what are you going to find new to, to, to pick on him about, right? Like he wears nail polish. Oh yeah. He's light skin. Oh, he's Canadian. Oh, he's this. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's almost like that Eminem eight mile thing where it's like, you know, Drake has already made fun of the things that you're going to make fun of him for. You know what I mean? He, he we seen him on like SNL and comedy skits. And when he did that thing with, um, um, uh, the sports awards like Drake is already comical like he's already down with making fun of himself like with the Chris Brown video but but Kung Fu Kenny Kendrick Lamar is more of like a serious dude right he's serious he's not really out here he doesn't do jokes he doesn't do skits he doesn't do funny things you know what I mean he doesn't put himself out there so because Kendrick is not on social media doesn't put himself out there and he only comes out with an album every 
three or four years. Um, I just feel like they're both lyrically on the same level. So like lyric for lyrics, you're not going to out lyric him. So it's really going to be about subject matter. And that's where, you know, Push had a little bit of an advantage when Drake and Push went because nobody knew Drake had a son and he exposed his son. So that's why he kind of technically won. Push went like after his mom, his dad and um, 40. Um, and apparently Drake and Jay Prince thought he took it too far and they wanted to like handle it in the back end of things like in the streets. We, it's up for debate of what happened. Street stuff, we may, we never, we may never know if something happened or not. Um, but that was the inclination. But um, uh, Kendrick and Drake, it's not street stuff. They're not going to take it there. It's really going to be about exposing. And I just don't see what Kendrick can expose from Drake that we already don't know or somebody already hasn't made fun of him about. You know what I mean? Like, that's the whole thing with Meek. It was like, oh, Drake doesn't write his own rhyme. So, like, all right, we found out that you have another ghostwriter for a song. Like, it's, like, and the reason why that whole ghostwriting thing didn't make sense is that Drake came up writing. He wrote for Wayne. He wrote for Dr. Dre. Like, he was a writer. So what? He had a ghostwriter on a couple of songs. A lot of people in the industry have. That's why that didn't finish Drake, and Drake won that battle. So, I just, I don't know. Maybe Kendrick has something, but from what I know, um, and I just think for the, how long Drake has been out and been at the top, anything that that could have been exposed has already been exposed. Whereas at Kendrick, nothing has really been exposed of him. Like you really don't know that much about Kung Fu Kenny. So I just feel like Kendrick is at a disadvantage for that reason and that reason alone. 100%, don't get me wrong. Kendrick is a beast. He's, you know, the beat is going to be crazy. The, the rhyme patterns are going to be crazy. The lyrics, like bar, like the bars are going to be crazy. The metaphors are going to be crazy. The rap is going to be crazy on the technical level. But um, Drake is still lyrical, bar for bar, whatever. He could stand up to that. And even if you want to say, to play devil's advocate, even if you want to say that, let's say, um, uh, Kendrick is like a 10 on 10 where it comes for like lyrical technical delivery ability. And you want to say that Drake is not there. He's a pop artist. Drake is a 9.5 on 10, which I don't agree. I think he's a 10 on 10, but for the, you know, the extra technical rappers out there that want to say that Drake might be a nine on 10, even if he loses in that by a half, by one point, I feel like Drake is going to make up for it tenfold with the stuff that he's going to expose about Kendrick Lamar. It's going to be bad. And I feel like it might, uh, people start, might, people might start feeling like how we feel about Cole for apologizing, right? Like we all knew Cole wasn't like killer. Oh my gosh, da da da, street battle, battle guy. But then, you know, he came out with that diss track. People said, yeah, it was mid. And then when he came out apologizing, people are like, yo, like, Yo, Cole is out of the top three. He's out of the um the big three. He's out of my top 10. I heard people saying like, yo, I'm taking down my J. Cole poster. Don't talk to me about him. I feel like after Drake exposes Kendrick, we, some people might feel that way about Kendrick Lamar. That's how big I feel um, this is. Um, if, if, if Button is talking about nuclear, that means that he knows that Drake has something in the cut. And I don't feel like Kendrick's nuclear bomb can be as big that's that's my that's my take that's my two cents on it remains to be seen so it's thursday so we're like one more day um well no so sorry it should be tonight midnight sorry it will be tonight midnight because i keep thinking friday the the rumors but it's friday but it's thursday night midnight so a couple of hours from now man a couple of hours from now we may hear either a drake response or a second Kendrick Lamar diss track and also keep in mind that it might also come out on the um, um, on the future um, Metro Boomin volume two there could be another disc from Kendrick and then maybe Drake has something in the cut and he might come Saturday or the Monday but anyways we're it we're in for a heavyweight bout this weekend according to Joe Button. Let me know what you guys think of this whole battle. Do you think they're going to drop? Do you think the story is true? And if you do think it is true, let me know who you think is going to win. Who is going to come out victorious in this? Um, or do you think it might be a tie and we might have to go to like a round three? Let me know. Send me an email. Trend, uh, trend out loud at cfqr600.com or comment um, underneath this video or on any of my social platforms at Trent out loud. 
Okay, in our second lead story, Young Miami is beefing with an upcoming rapper named uh, Desha Doll. All right, this is a little bit confusing. I had to pull this from a couple of different sources, and at first I was like, yo, who is Desha Doll? I've never even heard of this person. Why is she beefing with Young Miami? But I got the goods for you. Hopefully, I can make it make sense. All right, so um, Young Miami dropped a track called CFWM. I'm not too sure what it stands for. Oh, yeah, so Can't F... Can't F with me. Okay, so that's the track. I'm going to play the track for you, and then uh, we'll come back and I'll explain to you. I, I can obviously only play a little clip of it, but here is the track, okay? All right, I could go live right now without a effing filter, okay? So she put that out. People are like, yeah, yeah, okay, dope song. Then, then, um, uh, um, Desha Doll wrote, um, so, okay, sorry, there was a headline that came out and said, oops, up and coming rapper Desha Doll accuses Young Miami of stealing her lyrics on her new song, CFWM, uh, career. And she said, career down the drain, can't come up with your own ish, you jocking me. Um, she wrote, also wrote, I'll try to read it without all the swearing for the radio. Um, you back to your old face before surgery. You might as well catch a flight to the hood and come catch a fade career down the drain. Can't come up with your own ish jocking me. Uh, you was better off just saying you uh, uh, Desha doll fan because everybody know where that line came from. At this point, round these industries up. I think maybe round these industry H word up. You uh, B word too um, inspired and not flattering. Okay, so that was Desha. Then, then Young Miami, um, hold on, Young Miami responded in the comments. Hold on, let me find it. Um, oh no, sorry. Then, then Desha, sorry, Desha added Young Miami and said, "Run my fade, your career down the drain. You come, you can't come up with your own original stuff. Uh, run my fade." Okay. Then after Young Miami got that at. Hold on, let me find Young Miami's response. Okay, so then Young Miami responds and says, I'm from the hood, been in the hood my whole entire life, just recently got out the hood. I'm looking good with or without filters. I've never heard of you or your song before this situation, and you could have reached out to me or handled this differently. If you inspire people that should inspire you to keep going and not want to fight, be blessed and let me enjoy my release day. Ugh. Um, I kind of like that line, honestly. If she if she said, I like that. If you inspire people that should inspire you to keep going, I like that. And I actually like, yo, if, if you could have handled the situation differently. Um, so um the the girl, Desha, D Desha doll, um, she came out on her live um and said this to young Mammy. Take a listen. Young Miami, you might as well come to the hood and come catch this fade. We all know who the lyrics is. Either you coming in, you come and get your ass beat. Or, or you cut me a check. Okay, so uh, some of that click, clip I had read to you already. Now let me play you Desha Doll's um, track so you could hear what uh, she's referring to and then draw your own conclusions. Take a listen. I go live right now without a... I go live right now without a... I go live right now without a fucking filter. I go live right now without a fucking filter. All right, and that last piece there I just played was was hers, and then the last one there was Young Miami, so you could hear them together. So, whew, I actually I'm proud I got through that. Um, you know, these are the times where I feel like I need a girl co-host to like go back with like these catty back and forth things. But hey, I gotta do my job, so I gotta report to you. Um, uh, so um, I agree with um, with Young Miami here. Like, if 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 Desha Doll um, is 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 feeling like she that's that that young Miami is taking her track um and the song just came out today why not go um to her management why not like you know go it through it the proper channels and be like either a try to be like yo let me get on the remix or hey can you give me some money or give me some writing credit or whatever and then after you exhaust that let's say after like a week or two weeks or a month or whatever then you go on live and be like, yo, um, Young Miami dropped this. Um, I don't even remember the name of the title. CFWM. 
And yo, she stole my hook. Uh, yeah, I've been trying for a month. Yo, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a young rapper in the hood, you know, trying to make it out here. Blah, 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 blah. I feel like she stole my project. Uh, she stole my hook. And, you know, I've tried to reach out. Young Miami Arvos talks about how she's for the hood. She's for the people or whatever. I'm a young, starving artist. Young Miami is this multimillionaire. She's stealing my stuff and not giving it to me, giving and give me any of my royalties, not giving me a chance, not letting me come up on the remix. So now I'm reaching out to get support from the people. That would be the way to go about doing it. Instead of having your one day of fame, all the blogs are going to post about you and talk about you. Young Miami's never going to speak to you again. And now it's all done. You know what I mean? Like I just, it's not smart how she did it, but anyways, whatever. Um, I, I can't say, and also too, part two is like, I don't know if I could draw a conclusion to be like, if she took a line from her or not, you're going to need a little bit more than that, like the melody and all that stuff, right? So you're going to actually have to come up with proof from that, but whatever, I digress. That was the Young Miami Desha Doll story. For those of you who may have seen it on your blogs and don't know what's going on, that's what's going on. All right, that brings us to quick news. Ring my bell. All right, uh, it's with a heavy heart that I report the passing of legendary DJ Mr. C, um, and he passed away at the age of 57. For those of you who don't know, uh, Mr. C is a legendary, a legendary uh, DJ um, from New York, bed -Stuy. He was uh, Big Daddy Kane's DJ, um, and more importantly, he is the one who's credited for discovering Notorious B.I.G. So, um, you know, you're talking about what people arguably say is the greatest rapper of all times. He discovered um, Biggie. So um, it's a big loss. Hot 97 put this out and says, as a family at Hot 97 and WBLS, we deep, we're deeply saddened by the passing of our, of our beloved Mr. C. He wasn't just the DJ. He was a pop. He was a pillar of our station, bringing joy to countless listeners with his legendary throwback at noon sets. Mr. C's influence stretched far beyond airways, shaping the very fabric of NYC DJ culture. Our hearts are heavy as we send our love and condolences to his family and fans whose lives were touched through his music. Rest in peace, Mr. C, your legacy will live forever. Um, yeah, man, I remember like when I was modeling and I would like drive into, um, into New York City, um, course those times there um hot 97 was 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 popping was the station to listen to before power 105 and i remember always listening to mr c um the throwback at noon and hearing all these throwback tracks and he'd always play like some old school reggae and old school hip-hop like i remember listening to that man like so shout out to um, mr c uh, of course there's some um shout outs for some people in the industry ed lover said my heart is broken all that knew him loved him Take the music to heaven and put a wallop down. He was used to say putting a wallop down. Uh, rest in peace. Um, Paul Rosenberg, who works at um, Hot 97. We lost the iconic Mr. C. I listened to him yesterday. This is what is a little weird to me. I listened to him yesterday, and I am in complete shock. He was a dear friend to us all, a wonderful man, and one of the most important and impactful DJs of all times. I love you, C. Uh, so at this time, at this time, um, it's unknown. His death is unknown. Um, it doesn't sound like, let's say, like it's a murder or foul play because I think they would have reported that. But I don't know. It could have been like a heart attack or it could be something like I really I don't know. Um, I'll read to you a little bit of the report. It is with heavy hearts that we share the share the passing of legendary DJ Mr. C, the finisher. He passed away at age 57. His death was confirmed by his family. As per Hot 97, Mr. C was born Cal Calvin Le Lebrun, Lebrun, sorry, Calvin Lebrun, uh, was known as one of NYC's most prominent DJs. He was the official DJ for Big Daddy Kane and had a hand in discovering talent and helped breed, help bring Notorious B.I.G. to the world. In addition to being a Brooklyn native, he was part of the foundation that shaped Hot 97 to what it is today. Swipe through to see the touching tributes from... Hot 97 family, Paul Rosenberg and Ed Lover. Our thoughts are with Mr. C's and his family at this time. So, uh, yeah, man, I just, I don't know. Sad when you hear things like this happen to somebody so young, 57 years old. So from um, the, and it's kind of like ironic when I think about it. It's like I have, you know, a one hour, you know, kind of throwback um, station, sorry, show on um, CFQR 600. And it's literally 
inspired. I didn't even realize it until I read it, but it's inspired from uh, Mr. C from when I was a kid driving back, driving to, to New York, hearing that one hour. So um, I'll shout out to um, Mr. C and uh, us at CFQR 600 AM. Give our condolences to him and, of course, the staff at um, Trend Out Loud as well. Rest in peace, Mr. C. All right, in our second quick story, Ari Lennox and Joe Budden are trending. Apparently, um, Air, um, Ari Lennox is literally coming for Joe Budden. Why? I'm not too, too sure why. I do know that they have, like, ongoing beef, but apparently she put this in her stories, and it's, like, literally trending all over the place. Um, let me read to you the story, and then I'll read to you what you put in um, in her stories. Maybe it will give us some context. <laughs> we'll, le- we'll learn together. Sorry. Ari Lennox had time today. The singer is trending after seemingly calling out Joe Button and reposting a clip from her Instagram from her Instagram stories 27 times of Joe getting getting punched in the head by consequence during a live, love and hip hop reunion. While it's unclear what prompted the Ari post, it's not her first time calling Joe out. If you recall in January, Ari said the podcaster was obsessed with her. This came after he previously criticized the R&B singer over her comments about her tour with Rod Wave when she was hit uh, with a bottle by a concert goer. So again, not even the Shade Room understands what's going on. But like I said, these two are always going back and forth. Um, I, do I have a little clip of the video? Yeah, I have a little clip of the video. I'll put it up on, on my YouTube channel. You'll see Joe getting hit in the back of the head um, by consequence. <laughs> I'll also tell you uh, what she wrote in her stories. She said, uh, knocked your little glasses off and everything. That's from the video from when Consequence hit him in the head. She went on to say, keep my precious name out your psychotic, animal abusing, woman terrorizing, demonic trolling, nicotine encased mouth. (laughs) All this meth smoke for women, but no smoke for any men beating your... mm, in real life, um, bald head, a hole. So <laughs> she is literally going off. Um, I don't know. Like I said, nobody knows what's going on between those two. I don't know if it was like a, a romantic thing and they, they just don't like each other. We still don't know why. Like it literally, I think it's almost been like a year now. These going, these two have been going, um, back and forth, but listening to that, what she wrote on her stories, that's to me sounds like, like she's upset. There's something that happened, like a relationship, or they broke up, or they're seeing each other. There's something going on, I'm, I'm sure. But uh, anyways, I'll keep you guys up to date and let you know what's up. All right, this brings us to speed news. Ring my bell. All right, Robin Thicke posts a thirst trap and says he's releasing some music. Um, are y'all ready for some new Robin Thicke music? Uh, so um, I just wanted to post this because... Uh, I do normally post like girls on here. So I just want to be fair to like level out the playing field. So when yesterday, when um, uh, Rick Ross's ex-girlfriend, can't remember her name, um, Christina, Christina uh, McKay, can't remember. Anyways, I posted her and said she looked really hot. So I thought it would be only fair today to to post some male, um, (laughs) some male thirst traps. I actually have another one coming in a couple of speed stories down the line. But anyways, for those who want to see Uncle Robin Thicke is a, Pretty um, horrible pick, if you ask me. But hey, I'm a, I'm just a dude. But uh, yeah, uh, Robin Thicke. If y'all want to see Robin Thicke with the shirt off in the bathroom and uh, him saying he's in album mode, new music Friday. Head to my YouTube page. Um, I would think if you're over 35 or maybe over 40, you might be interested. Anybody who's like 30 and younger, trust me, you're not going to want to see this. Shout out to Robin Thicke. All right, in our second speed story, former President Donald Trump hit up Atlanta Chick Fil A. Uh, it's actually really funny to see this. Um, I'm going to play the clip. I can show you, I can play the clip for you guys here too. Take a listen. So we'll order 30 milkshakes. We'll give them out to the people and we'll take some for ourselves. Okay? Good. Thank you very much, everybody. We're going to order 30 milkshakes and give them out to the people. Okay? Yo, Donald Trump is a comedian, even when he's not trying to be a comedian. But anyways, that is um, Donald Trump in Atlanta, Chick-fil-A. All right, in our third speed story, Kim Kardashian and her mini-me uh, Northwest popped out at the LA's Warriors game dressed in all black serving looks. It's really cute. I love seeing North and Kim together. The outfits are a little questionable, if you ask me. I'm <laughs> like super baggy, extra leather, but um, it's really cute. So all you Kim Kardashian fans, anybody who's following Kim 
and North on TikTok, which I actually do follow them and they actually do some really um, funny skits. Um, North is very entertaining. But anyways, go up on my YouTube page and check out this picture. Kim and North courtside at the Lakers game. All right, in our fourth speed story, Russell Wilson named Essence Magazine second sexiest man of the moment. All right, we posted this yesterday. Um, by the way, so this is the third, the second thirst trap of the day. Um, but yesterday we talked about um, Damson Idris being on the cover. I don't know if they're on the cover or they're just named um, second sexiest. I, I, I'm so confused by this. And like I said yesterday, the video that they put out that had dangerous dance Damson in it, I was like, yo, it's not all Damson. And now we figure out that it's Russell. So we still don't know exactly what Essence Magazine um, is doing. But anyways, Russell Wilson, Sierra's husband, um, Denver Bronco, actually not Denver Bronco anymore. Sorry, he's now with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, Pittsburgh Steelers is the second sexiest man of the moment, according to um, Essence Magazine. Essence is continuing with love as they announce their second sexiest man of the moment star cover. Um, I still don't understand what the moment is, but hey, shout out to Essence, shout out to Russell for making um, making second place. You got the silver award, bro. All right, in our fifth speed story, Megan the Stallion is on the cover of Women's Health. All right, this here is for me, man. Back to uh, women thirst traps. Um, um, so yes. Um, <laughs> Sorry, gotten a little excited looking at these pictures. Um, uh, Megan Thee Stallion, who I love. Y'all know I love you, Megan Thee Stallion. She is on the cover of uh, Women's Health magazine, and she is looking very, very healthy, I must say. Um, some of the people are kind of a little um, shocked at these pictures. They're uh, NSFW, not safe for work. Uh, or I'm going to put some up on my YouTube page. There's one that, that we have to cover and put like a, a heart emoji over her butt. Cause I feel like there's like a butt crack showing, but, um, no, Megan looks good for those of you guys who follow Megan on her Instagram. She's always in the gym. She's always dieting. She's always working hard. She's always, um, cooking, um, cooking smart, healthy food. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I think she got a, a Nike deal if I'm not mistaken a couple of months ago, but yeah, Megan Thee Stallion is super hot. I love Megan. I love all these pictures. Um, I don't think there's one with her having any clothes on. It's literally, she's just fully naked, but she's covering up. But yeah, shout out to Megan Thee Stallion. And thank you for letting me um, put at least one thirst trap in this whole like thirst trap post with like two other dudes in here. I feel, I have to, I feel like I need one more woman today thirst trap to level out the playing field. I'm just joking. Shout out to Megan, man. All right, in our six speed story, Zeus CEO releases another sneak peek of Baddies Caribbean. Uh, Roly argues with uh, Anna Mack, whose face is fractured. Don't get it fractured some more. Um, all right, I can't play the trailer for you guys, so there's a lot of swearing and copyright stuff going on, but I'll play a small little clip. This is why I cannot watch this show. It's literally just straight yelling. Ah! That's that's all I hear. But I do know a lot of people do follow the show. Um, I actually saw them. Um, shout out to uh, Natalie Nunn. Uh, I was actually with them in Barbados when I was there a couple of weeks ago. So shout out to um, the Zeus Network and Natalie Nunn. Um, so I wanted to promote this. Yes, I do not watch it, but I do support the, the Zeus Network. I even support, uh, what's his name, um, Ray J and Tronix uh, Network. Um, you know, they're black owned, uh, networks. I wish they would do a little bit more positive programming, but listen, you know, reality shows are not my thing and these baddies and all that stuff is not my thing, but I do know a lot of people like it out there. So for those of you who are, are fans of the Zeus network, just know that baddies, um, Caribbean, um, is coming out and this is the second trailer. So if you guys like it, look out for it soon. All right. In our seventh and final speed story. Uh, Kevin, sorry, Kevin, Kendrick Lamar's like that diss track has now officially sold 1 million units in the USA. So this, uh, track is actually platinum right now. This is exactly what I said J. Cole should have done. Um, as we, as hip hop fans, as music fans are going to these streaming services and listening to these guys' music, downloading it, then getting back on these blogs and talking about it or getting back online or on YouTube pages or podcasts. These guys are making money. You know what I mean? So like, that's why it should always stay on wax. Anything you do outside of that, you're really just wasting your time. That's what I say, J. Cole, when he apologized, 
he should have made a track and that track would have made him some money. You know, he almost basically kind of ruined his career, but at least if you, you know, would have went out doing, you know, like, like Kendrick having a million soul, like that's money for these dudes. So Drake, when he drops his diss track, that's going to go platinum. Kendrick's new diss track, that's going to go platinum. So while all we're here as fans streaming stuff and talking about it, these guys are making bank. That's the music industry though, especially today. Like that's the music industry. So I salute these guys um, and salute to um, Kendrick for his uh, track going platinum. All right, this brings us to question of the day. I have two questions of the day. I'm going to have to go through them really quickly to make sure I get through all of them. Uh, the first one is name a movie where the sequel was better than the original. All right. Um, Nick Turner, 26, said Godfather 2. I don't know if I agree with that. Sister Act 2, Home Alone 2, Dark Knight. Home Alone 2 is not better than Home Alone 1. And Sister Act 2, I don't remember, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut on that. Um, Karate Kid with Jaden Smith and Jackie Chang. Are you crazy? Better than the first Karate Kid? Yo, you're nuts. Space Jam 2. Are you? Are, okay, you people are. I, I can't believe this N-word actually is the name of this guy's handle. Yo, I can't believe you. Um, yeah, anyway, Space Jam 2 with LeBron. That's crazy. Uh, the Dark Knight was top tier. Okay, that's the second person that was saying that. So maybe that one was good. I don't watch Batman, so... Um, uh, let me see another one. All right. This person put final destination two. Okay. I could see that blade two. No blade. One was better. Lethal weapon two. Yo, that's hard, man. All the lethal weapons were really dope. Um, I don't know. Die hard two. Okay. I could take that. I don't know if I agree. And pet cemetery. I did not see that. Um, uh, imitation of life, little mermaid, Adam's family equalizer two. do not disagree with that. Uh, here is my answer. I'm not going to say it. I'm going to wait. Um, Friday got better each one. Okay. I, I could take that. I still think Friday is the best one. Um, oh, here's a good one. I didn't think of Terminator two. Terminator two was really good, man. That's a good one. I didn't think about that. Terminator two was probably better than the first one. Um, all right. This person is saying the one that I'm saying, the bride of Chucky, which I don't know. And I'll read one more. Um, Problem Child 2. Here we go. This is a good one. Uh, Back to the Future Part 2 was better than the first, arguably. Anyways, for me, Bad Boys 2 is arguably one of my favorite movies of all times. Just because, like, I wouldn't say acting-wise, but movie-wise, like, I love it. So overall, yes, it's my favorite movie of all times. And it was better than the first one. It was, the first one was still really good, but Bad Boys 2 was it was better it, it was top tier the action the the money they put behind it was just bigger better the story like back and forth with the you know with the miami drug dealers haitian drug dealers and then we had to go to like i think it was like puerto rico or cuba or whatever just it was dope gabriel union like which is a better storyline it was more iconic thousand percent i'm gonna say terminator 2 bad boy 2 all right second question of the day uh if i could find it here quickly all right. How early do you arrive at the airport? I had to put this in because this makes me really mad. Um, okay. I am Harris said, I have global entry. I'll see y'all 30 to 45 minutes before my boarding time. Urgh, just pisses me off. Um, Jay Reddy wrote, my TSA plus clear check combo is lethal. I'll see you 10 minutes before the flight. Somebody said, um, my financial intelligence leaves once I arrive at the airport. Somebody else said hours. So he said, try 55 minutes before departure. If my name ain't being called on the intercom, something ain't, something ain't right. Um, I am real Doza 82 wrote 30 minutes before I have clear, which is a, I guess a thing in the States. Um, let me see. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Evans 82 wrote baby. I live in Atlanta F. FW TSA, you might as well spend the night before there. It's not joyful in Atlanta and it's not that bad. Um, all right, I'll read one more. Corey Knox wrote, arriving 45 minutes till the door closes, still looking for parking and rushing through TSA, screaming, I ain't gonna make it. Yo, I don't understand you people. I cannot stand people that are late for flights. Yo, it's not only, so my answer is, yo, I am at my flight early. Good three hours before my flight. If I'm flying within Canada, then I'll be there like an hour, hour and a half. But if I'm doing like international or going to the US, I'm there three hours before. Let me tell you why. 
it's not only TSA, it's also A, on the way there, you might not know what can happen. If you're going in a taxi, the taxi could show a plate, the taxi could get a ticket, the taxi could get a flat tire. Um, when you get there, you could uh, have forgotten something, maybe you forgot your passport. The whole point of going early is in case things happen. Now, I understand 80 or 90% of the time, nothing happens, but what about that 15, 20% of the time? That's why you're supposed to go to the airport early, people, in case things happen. And if you end up being early, who cares? It doesn't cost you anything to just sit down. It drives me nuts when people are late for flights. If ever I'm flying with somebody, my nephew, every single time I fly with this guy, first of all, I refuse to go with him. I meet him there and I'm literally on the plane. The door is about to close and this guy sticks his head through the door. Literally, it's happened four or five times. Every single time, I really feel like he's never going to make it. And literally, right before they're going to close the door, he sticks his head and he's like, yo, what's up, man? Yo, I, I can't understand for the life of me why people do that on flight. Anything could happen, man. You could forget things, acts, car accident, whatever. You have your plane ticket. The plane ain't going to wait for you. You're going to have to spend money. Actually, now that I think about it, my nephew one time was late and he had to actually pay for his flight coming back after. So uh, that would drive me crazy, man. I am not going to pay extra for a flight just because um, I'm being an idiot and and like, oh man, I'm not going to go to the flight. Yeah, I'm not. A, no, no, just, it just drives me nuts. Anyways, I'm, I'm running out of time, but as you could tell, it's one of my pet peeves. Don't fly with me and come late. Don't, don't do it. All right, this brings us to sports news. Um, Cam Newton was on Club Shay Shay. Shout out to Club Shay Shay, Shannon Sharp. You always know I always like to plug him every interview he does. Cam Newton was on Club Shay Shay, and he said, if you gave Kirk Cousins my resume, he would probably have gotten more. I'm just keeping it. Uh, I'm just keep. I'm just exposing the truth. Sorry, I'm just exposing the truth. Um, so basically, actually, I have a clip. Let him explain it a little bit too. Here you go. What the Falcons paid Kirk Cousins, they could have got Cam Newton, Justin Fields, and Michael Vick for that price. So listen, I don't know what Cam is insinuating. I haven't watched the whole interview, but this has gone on viral. Um, and he's like, yo, you could have got Cam Newton, this, whatever, blah, blah, for the same price you got Kirk Cousins. Another good point that they made that I wasn't able to play the clip for you is that he just came, Kirk Cousins just came off of an injury. He has a torn ACL. Why are you giving him a $180 million contract and not giving it to somebody else. So I'm not too sure if he is saying that this is like a, a racial thing. Um, I don't want to put that out there if it's not what he's meaning, but that kind of sounds like, like he's subliminally saying. And he's also trying to say that people have it out for Cam Newton um, and they just don't, you know, they just want to sign him. They say that he's, he's bitter and he's this and he has an attitude and they just don't want to sign him. Um, and he basically saying, just look at my talent. And why are you signing somebody that is not as good as me? So I don't know. Like I said, I haven't watched the whole interview, but uh, for you Cam Newton fans or NFL fans, apparently it's supposed to be a really good um, podcast. I'll watch it probably tonight or tomorrow, maybe over the weekend. If I hear anything else of it, I will definitely fill you guys in and let you know. But I always got to shout out my boy, Shannon Sharp, Club Shay Shay. Um, and plug that for him. All right, guys, uh, that's it. That's my time. That's the show. I hope you liked it. As always, if you're listening to this podcast on a podcast platform or on YouTube, just remember you could always check me out on the radio, cfqr600.com, anywhere in the world, or 600 FM if you're in the Montreal area. We do play this podcast with uh, 90s and hip hop, um, 90s, 90s and 2000s hip hop and R&B. Again, shout out to Mr. C with his throwback hour for inspiring us all to get on the radio and play some throwback music. So shout out to um, Mr. C. Uh, vice versa, if you're always catching us on the radio, don't forget, you don't always have to be at your radio. I know how it is. Y'all are busy out there. If you can't catch the show from 11 to 12 on the radio, just know you can catch it on demand on any podcast platform or on YouTube. Just search Trend Out Loud. That's your boy. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for kicking it with me. Keep your ears open for that Drake and Kendrick diss track coming tonight. It's dropping tonight, Thursday, uh, Thursday, April 11th. We'll see what, sorry, no, sorry. It's going to be technically April 12th because it's Friday midnight. All right. Friday midnight, 12.01 a.m. April the 12th. Look out for that. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for kicking with me. It's your boy. Peace. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy. Turn it out. Peace.